All right, welcome back to the Jason Gray Show. Let's go ahead and talk about Tesla again. Let's go ahead and talk about how I think a lot of these puzzle pieces that we all have scattered out here on our table, that are all sort of coming together and creating a really good picture, not only for us, because we all sort of have a really good idea what Tesla stock is doing, but what just the general public is sort of seeing that's happening with Tesla. So let's go ahead and just talk about the cars first, and we'll work our way around in our little puzzle piece here that I'm sort of talking about, and just you know, talk about these things. So a couple of things that are happening. Uh, Elon was just in China, and he came back from there. Supposedly, it was they were talking about the Project Highland, which is the remodeled Model 3, a revamped interior, maybe a few nose pieces, hardware 4 that's all coming in place. That should be a good catalyst for that model because that model has not been changed for, what, seven or eight years roughly, give or take. So that's been the same you know, sort of look for that amount of time. And the Model 3 was really the big piece to get it really affordable for most people as well. So the, the Model 3 is a critical piece of the puzzle. Now, we all know that the Model Y is the number one selling car now in the, throughout everywhere. And so in doing so, you know, someone had asked, you know, are they going to revamp that one? I think that they will, but I don't think they will for a while. I think they got a lot of other things on their plate right now. So those two cars are selling really, really well. And then the Model S and X, those are selling not great, but they did throw them into other markets, which will help those sales on those cars. Now, those cars have some huge profit margins in them, and that will be a, a big help. Now, the next thing that's coming up here really, really soon, we're probably talking within the next 60 to 90 days, is the Cybertruck's going to roll off the, 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 the floor. At, and you see the sightings of them. You're seeing pictures of the castings of the rear front and the rear castings. And you're sort of getting excited because you're serious. You, you see this right now. And, you know, us Tesla investors and people who really love Tesla are following it really closely. You don't see this happening with other automakers like, a, you know, a Ford or a Chevy, maybe with a Chevy Corvette when that was coming out. That was a big thing that everyone followed there for a while. But in regards to Tesla, Tesla is like a, an Apple. Whenever a new product comes out, everyone's getting in line to get stuff. So that Cybertruck itself is going to get released that's going to create another push that we're going to be dealing with. Well, don't forget, we have a lot of other things that are going on. You know, we still have that semi truck that they're that they're producing. And there will be a model two is what we're calling it right now, a compact that's going to happen. But that's not going to probably happen until the Mexico location is built out. And they actually start the new generation of how they build cars. So let's talk about the new generation, how they're building cars. Now, when you build a traditional car right now, you have this big box and you paint the whole box, you take the doors off, you put them somewhere off to the side. I don't know where they put these doors and then they start layering things in here. Then you got this big car that only maybe five people can work on at a time. And, and it's creating a situation where it's very inefficient. Now, when Ford came out with this assembly line, everyone was like, this is the thing in which it was the thing, but technology changes and Automakers need to make a change now. So what they're going to do is they're going to build the front of the car, the rear of the car, and the undercarriage of the car, and the sides, and then the windows. And they're all going to be separate parts that are going to come together. Now, the, why is that a benefit? Because this whole front section, you could have five people working on this front section, five people over here working on the rear section, five people working on the middle section, and five people dealing with the painter exterior or windows or whatever it might be. And then it all comes together at once. Now, this is a unique situation. How are all those body lines going to line up? How is all this going to come together? Trust me, Tesla is incredibly smart. They got the smartest people in the world working for that company. They'll come up with a solution. It might be clunky initially, but as soon as they get that down in Mexico, then they're going to they're gonna roll them out everywhere else. What this does, though, it creates a less of a footprint that you need for your manufacturing center because you don't have to lug around this big piece as pieces are coming in and out of it on this assembly line. So you have less space that you need, and they say you could be 40% more efficient on your cost in regards to like overhead costs, labor costs, not material costs, but those costs, which add up to being a lot, and that can be passed on to the consumer, which ultimately that's what Tesla's you know mission is, is to really make affordable EVs for everyone. And they're trying to accomplish that by changing things around. And, you know, the legacy automakers have got to be shaking in their boots in regards to what is going on with Tesla and what they're doing. And Tesla puts it right in their face. 
They're not saying that they're keeping the stuff secret. They've said what they're going to do. They're not going to do it for another year or two. And the legacy automaker should be sitting there going, how can we mirror this? And is it really cost effective? And which sounds like it really is. So legacy automakers are losing so much money right now on their EVs. They got to get their costs under control. They got to scale. And then they need to start selling their cars. The only other really key players right now, I think that has a shot is uh, BYD and then Rivian. Those are the two biggest, I think, players that are pure, that they could go EV. I know I know BYD is not a pure EV, EV uh, car company, but they're doing some good things. And Rivian is doing some good things. They just need to learn how to scale and get their costs down so they're not losing so much money on these cars try to get as quickly as possible to a break even and get a lower price car that's out there to hit more of the masses so they can get some volume out. So everyone's doing really good. Now let's go ahead and pivot now to what happened between Ford and Tesla. Ford and Tesla became into an agreement that Ford's gonna be able to use the Tesla's charging stations, but utilize it through the Ford Pass app. So they can still stick with their Ford product, all the Ford stuff, but they're able to use the charging stations. And then using the charging stations is gonna do a great thing for Tesla. It's gonna create revenue from their charging stations, which I consider as gas stations. Just think about all the charging gas stations that are around. And then they're getting some little bit of coverage in regards to branding Tesla because the Ford is going to a Tesla charging station. They're able to talk to other Tesla owners, compare their notes to each other and talk about their products. Good thing for Tesla, right? then you got to take a look at all the other legacy automakers. They're going to have to make a decision. Do you have the big clunky charger or do you come to an agreement with Tesla to use their charging stations and move on? Now, whoever's doing the charging stations for Tesla has been doing a great job in regards to the locations. They hit all the major highways, all really close to the highways. They've started outskirting out into the suburbs and there's easy access for most people to get to a charging station. Now, I've heard there are reports of other charging stations that get backed up. I've never been to a charging station that has been full ever in my entire life that I've had to wait for anything. Now I usually charge at my house and more, I think most people do the same. They just plug in their car and when they wake up in the morning, they got a full charge. I've got the luxury of having a 220 plug. And so mine charges up really super fast. I mean, we're talking 30, 30 miles of charge per hour. So if I drain it down to a hundred miles, I mean, I'm charged back up right away. It's not like it's an issue whatsoever for us. And it hasn't been an issue. I've taken my miles down to five miles, stressed me out a little bit, but then I plugged in and things were, were totally good. So, um, so keep that in the back of your mind. There are going to be more and more and more charging stations, which technically think in your mind, everyone, this is like having gas stations which creates revenue in the long term for Tesla. So there's a huge revenue source. So we now we have the car, we have the charging stations. Now let's go ahead and talk about the mega packs and we'll continue to move on with these puzzle pieces we're talking about. The mega packs have a profit margin at bare minimum of 20%. There's rumors that the profit margin is going to make it to 40 to 50%, but even at a 20 or 25%, you know, margin on a $2 million product that has no FSD, no, you know, uh, human interaction. It's literally batteries in a box with some special software that can arbitrage the, 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 the energy system. So what they do is they bring energy in at night when it doesn't cost hardly anything for energy. And when the peak energy is out, they release the energy and they make the profit between. And so those things pay for themselves compared to a normal system that is just there as a backup battery and not arbitraging, arbitraging the energy system. So think about it. Not only do they make the one time sale on this, but they make $200,000 a year in the contract for maintenance yearly on each mega pack. And when you get scale and you have a lot of mega packs out there, we're talking about that piece of the puzzle could be a trillion dollar company. So you got the car company, a trillion dollar company, the energy's charging stations, let's say a, a $200 billion company. You got the mega pack, another trillion dollar company. You're talking about all this stuff right here, just in the small three pieces. Then you were not even talking about robo taxi or full self-driving. I've got the newest version, the 11.4.2 version, and I'm disengaging 
I would say from my home to work probably two times. The rest of the time, the car is driving itself. Now, am I paying attention? Am I still, you know, watching my, my gas pedal and brake pedal? Am I still have my hands close or on the steering wheel? Is it nagging me from time to time? Yes. But it keeps me down in the middle of the road, right? And uh, it's, it's literally the most, in my personal opinion, the amazing thing. And they don't have this thing down yet all the way. Now, the reason why I'm disengaging is usually because I just think, People around me are thinking I'm a complete idiot Tesla driver because because it's making some weird actions where it slows down too much or a, a car is merged in with you and it's slammed on its brakes because it's worried about hitting you, but it's just not. There are people going to this other lane. It's being very cautious, which is a good thing to be cautious. Better be cautious than, you know, getting a wrecks, right? So the full self-driving can be another trillion-dollar revenue source. We're talking it cost $15,000 to buy it or $200 a month. And at $200 a month, they're thinking what they're gonna do is when they get this to a certain level, they're gonna give it free for 30 days. And then those people that are thinking they're gonna get a great take rate after that of 40, 50 or 60% of those people that do it for free and really realize what they're dealing with, they'll keep that as a product for themselves. So all the cars have that software in the system and they can, they can do that whole piece. Now, where ARK Investments is talking about is RoboTaxi, where the car literally, you summons it to you, you go get in the car, there's no steering wheel, and it drives you to wherever you're at. That seems very Jetsons on us, right? Very like way out of control. That is what ARK Investment is putting all their piece of the puzzles are. Now, ARK Investment is saying that this stock should be worth $2,000, no financial advice, by 2025. If the full self-driving robo taxi starts working by that time. And we all know Elon has talked about this full self-driving is gonna be ready in the next six months multiple times, and I know that, but at some point in time, they will get it there, and I think they will be there first. I, I don't think Wave or Cruise will get there before us, I think, or before us, before Tesla, um, will, will happen before that. So that's another revenue source. So now we're cars, were the gas stations slash power stations, the mega packs and the full self-driving. Let's go ahead and talk about another source that they have, right? And, and all those to combine together are just crazy. But now we got their robots, the Optimus robots. They had that in at investor day and they showed five or seven of them walking around like they were in a manufacturing center uh, where all the cyber trucks were at. If they can perfect, perfect a robot to do some basic functions for themselves in regards to a manufacturing idea, basic things of like picking up materials, going to get something and bringing something back, just some basic movements that they can do, it could take labor costs for, for co corporations down dramatically. I think initially these robots would be used strictly with Tesla in a very controlled environment until they can sort of figure out how to get these things to work. But if they can get those things to work, Elon is saying that that could be literally a game changer. If they're talking about if it actually works, 8 billion robots. Think about that. And if they're selling those robots at $50,000 a piece or $30,000 or $40,000 a piece, those robots are going to take away from, unfortunately, your jobs, most of your jobs, if it's just a manufacturing job. And so, and that's where, where, or maybe it's your landscape, or maybe the robot mows your yard, maybe it edges your yard, maybe it trims all your trees. I don't care what it does. But at that point in time, it would be sort of very sci fi as for all, all of us to have a, a, a Tesla robot in our house. It'd be really weird. But that's okay. Things change in life. Um, and so there's a whole nother revenue source right there. And then the last one that we'll talk about is Dojo is a supercomputer that they're dealing with. We won't talk about like the lithium factories that they're building and whatnot. Those, those are extra things. But we'll talk about Dojo. Dojo is the supercomputer system that if it turns into something, he said it could be a dramatic game changer for Tesla stock and te Tesla prices. This is like a supercomputer that's sort of like, I really have no idea how to even describe it, but it's really like a supercomputer that can do literally anything. So they are buying the computer parts from these from uh, NVIDIA and creating the system. And if that turns into something, he said that could be a crazy thing. But just think about all these things under the Tesla umbrella. We didn't even talk about Tesla insur car insurance, by the way. But just think about all these umbrellas with the stock that you own. 
that is what you're in control of. So you investing in Tesla stock is controlling all these different parts. And if one, two, or three of these puzzle pieces come together and have a full picture, the stock prices should skyrocket. Again, no financial advice, but just look at all these things that we just talked about in the short amount of time. And we're seven minutes into this video and we've talked about multiple companies that all that he's in charge of. And you know, this is not him talking about Twitter or his his open AI that he's thinking about doing or his um or or SpaceX or or anything like that. The guy is a the king of not only scaling manufacturing, but delegating to the smart people and saying, This is what I need you to get to. How do you get there? And how can we actually make all this sort of come together? So he's putting people's in, people in charge to handle themselves. And when we had the day where it wasn't an investor day, but it was like an introduction day to all these different managers within Tesla, there's 15 of them. He is putting the power in them to do their departments the right way so Tesla can make some money. And he's, he's a genius that way in regards to scaling. I mean, you can't imagine any other company that's, they had the Fremont location, they have the Shanghai location, they have the, the Austin location, they have the Lathrop location, they have the um, Berlin location. I think there's a couple other locations throughout the, the world. You got them building the one in Tex or in, um, in, in Mexico as well, the Gigafactory there. Think about all that scaling in such a short amount of time. Like I said, these puzzle pieces are all scattered, but some of them are starting to come together a little bit. And as they come together, what's that going to do to your stock price? I think it's going to go up. We'll have some ups and downs, but I think in the long term, I mean, there are some crazy, crazy numbers people are throwing out there for 20, 30. I mean, you're talking five, six, seven, ten thousand $10,000 a share. Those seem like absolutely crazy numbers. But even if you get to two or three or $4,000 a share, I think you'd be incredibly happy with your investment. Um, again, no financial advice. Um, give me your thoughts. Hopefully you gave a quick overview of where I think all these puzzle pieces are right now. And I think, you know, in the next 18 to 24 months, I think things are going to be looking pretty rosy for everyone. So like and subscribe, give me your opinions. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.